Hey guys, how y'all doing? It's me, Johnny, back again with SoRare. Sorry about the lack of content in the last few days. There has been a couple of things that have been going on that kind of held me back from jumping in there, but you guys will see it later on. I went to the Eintracht versus Bayern Munich game on the courtesy of SoRare, basically, and it was a beautiful match. I didn't go to a football game in a long time. It was interesting to sit there as a Bayern fan in between hundreds and thousands of Eintracht Munich fans as they all cuss out my team. But I also still sympathize with Frankfurt because it's the closest team to me. So it was kind of interesting to be in there. Next time I'm going to be in that stadium, I just hope they're not playing against Bayern so I can actually cheer for Eintracht as well. But... Bayern Munich obviously won that game. That vlog is going to be up on my main channel, which is Johnny Sports, uh, the big one. But uh, now, guys, welcome back to so Rare. If you guys are getting involved in so Rare, of course, go ahead and use the link in the description down below. Once you've clicked that link, sign up immediately. Then if you click the invite friends section and scroll all the way down, it should say Johnny Sports right here as your referrer. That means it has worked. And if you go there, then go ahead and buy five items off the market, no matter which scarcity, you will be given a free item, a free limited item. So go ahead and sign up if you can. That'd be much appreciated. It helps me and it helps you as well, because if you don't sign up using an affiliate link, that means you're not getting any free players. So that is something to keep in mind. Now, today, what do I want to talk about? <sighs> I want to talk about this game week, man. It has been such a mess. I was so, so, so upset. And I will show you guys the live reactions to the game as well of the one team that I really, really had high hopes with. So I'll show you the live reactions to me watching Olympique Marseille play against Troy because my Diaby already had 92 points in my Champ Europe team. I just needed Marseille to keep a clean sheet and win with one of my players getting a decisive. And it was so close. So enjoy the, the live content here and I'll be back right after it. My reactions to that game and I'll talk through it after. Hey guys, how y'all doing? It's me, Johnny. And this is about to be a mental one. We are going to be watching Olympique Marseille with all four of my players in a starting lineup. We have Paul Lopez, we have Kaletakar, we have Saliba, and also Dimitri Payet, who are going to be playing in just a second. Even just with them being in a starting lineup, are already up to 245 points. And lads, here's the thing. Diaby yesterday performed extremely well. This man got himself two goals in that last match. Musa Diaby is currently absolutely on fire. People want to buy him off the market. I received a couple of insane offers already. And he just sold for 3700 Wow, this guy just bought him yesterday for 3200 3, and now sold him on for 3700 What a guy. A nice flip, mate. That's a really nice flip. People want DRB because he is currently looking insane. 79 points in his last five. Next game is against Bayern Munich. So that man probably made a good choice in selling him already. Um, but... You can see the last five have been incredible and he is in an incredible run of form. I've been watching the Bayer Leverkusen games and I think he is class. This kid is pure quality right now and I see a lot of good things happening to him. So rather than selling him like Coman this time around, I might keep him around. So just a heads up to you guys. I did not sell yet. If I would sell, I would make around 1,300 euros profit um, looking at the price that he just sold for. But... You can see that if these Marseille boys perform and if they finally can keep a clean sheet, I am not joking. They're played against some of the worst teams, uh, one of the worst teams in Liga, and this team has scored the least amount of goals. So what's going to happen now is I'm going to be recording my live reaction to this game and also the Liverpool versus Chelsea final. I'm so excited about today. My other teams have sucked, sadly. Individual performers have been decent, but this is it now, my friends. We are stepping in against <sighs> Troy. That is the one. Dimitri Payet and his lads hopefully can finally come up with a clean sheet. They haven't had one ever since I bought them, I believe, apart from the uh, Conference League game. But this is it, lads. I'll say... Good luck. You'll see the highlights of me raging or celebrating 
I hope it's going to be more of the celebrating. So looking at the starting lineup of Marseille as we speak, it's surprising to not see um, Arkadiusz Milik in there. But I like Bamba Dieng. He has been quality. So I'm actually really looking forward to seeing how he is going to be doing in this game. I hope he can provide a little bit more pace up front and do a great job. So... Let's hope, let's really hope this is going to go well. It's Basically, what I'm hoping for watching this game right now is going to be seeing the Marseille centre-backs getting a clean sheet, passing it around in between each other a million times. Paul Lopez getting to pass the ball around as well. And that's going to be great for us. So that's the ideal situation. If they can keep a clean sheet, these guys already have great all-around scores due to their passing play in between each other constantly. And even Paul Lopez, like... If he gets a clean sheet, that's an easy 60 plus points, easily. Like that guy is uh, p capable of getting like 70 plus as well. It just comes down to Marseille finally stepping it up and defending better than they have been. One thing we need to mention, of course, is the fact that Dimitri Payet is my captain. So I need him to get a good cross in on top of someone's head or even get a goal himself from like a free kick or any types of situation that he can get involved in. He has a lot more freedom to move forward now uh, since Milik isn't in the starting lineup and Dieng seems to be playing a little bit more on the left. Dimitri Payet is free roaming up front. Oh no, they're through on the left. Rongier is always out of position. Yo! Hey, Sampaoli, can we play an actual right back in the right back spot? That'd be much appreciated, mate. Come on, man. Rongier is constantly in the middle of the pitch. He's not a right back. I don't know why he's playing him on the right back position consistently. His positioning is just terrible. I swear, man. Pae has played 10 passes. I am not joking. He misplaced nine of them. He has lost possession at least nine times by now. This guy, honestly, what the hell is he on about? Oh, pen ref. Yes, let's go. Penalty. Please tell me Dimitri Payet takes him. Horrible and tackle on Gendouzi. Horrible tackle. Clear pen. Yes. From it's Payet. Yes. Please. Please, and Dimitri. Please, Dimitri. Penalties. Please, please, please. He has converted five, has converted five of his last six one, penalties. One that oh, that would be all me, right? Payet has had a Lowest. horrible game so far. I need this decisive to bring to up his right. scores. Please. Oh, my God. I beg Gallo. you. Goalkeeper jumping around, going mental, trying to take his off, take his... Oh, what a, what a goal! Dimitri Payet into the top right corner. The goalkeeper tried to take his attention off the ball, but who cares? The man with the two things on, his, on top of his head scores the goal for Marseille. Yes, mate. Come on, Dimitri. Ah, oh, you love to see it. Congratulations, Mickey Mouse. You've done it. <laughs> Dude, those his hair is just so confusing. It looks like <laughs> I don't even know, man. Who cares? Payet, yes, one decisive secured. Get in. I'll show you an update on the score in a second once it updates on so rare data. Take a look at it. Paul Lopez 43.9, 40 for Saliba, 40 uh, no, 43.5 for Saliba, 74 points for my captain right now. Oh, mate, we're already up to 320 if now, lads. Uh, lads. I'm, I'm not going to put the scores on the, on the screen. They look terrible. But I will be updating you guys like this. But with my luck, Payet would probably pick up a red card in this game still. <laughs> Anyways, um, yeah, a clean sheet, boys. And we are already up to around 340 points, which would probably secure us some rewards. So let's hope this continues and we do even better and the boys can... Continue passing the ball around the back and getting some nice AAA scores. I'm watching the games on both sides, man. Sadio had a good chance to possibly score there. Oh, no. Yes, Paul Lopez. 1v1 one one save. Come on, then, lad. Let's go, Paul. Woo. Great through ball by Troy. That is an incredible through ball. But even better from Paul Lopez. Love him. It's time to update the squad. Half time. Here it is, my friends. Paul Lopez, after that great save, I think he should have had a much better uh, point total here because that one save was absolutely immense. I don't know why that is such a low uh, point total. Like 1v1 situations should be given a lot more points, in my opinion. Like save, save shot from inside the box. Good high claim, punches, diving save, diving catch, cross not claimed. 
Like, I don't like that. I don't, I don't like that. There should be a stat that kind of showcases 1v1 situations where if they do well, they get points. If they don't, well, so be it type of thing. Uh, because you can't get punished as a goalkeeper for failing in like a 1v1 situation because the attacker most of the time has an advantage. Nonetheless, um, the boys are looking great. Um, Kaleta is already up to 46.8. He's had a, having an amazing game. Saliba is doing really well himself, 44.7. And these boys, as the game goes on, tend to do even better. So, yeah, we still are looking at that 40 point plus coming in later on, if we can. And Dimitri Payet already up to 64.3. I think there's still another decisive in him in this game. And uh, currently, when we look at the rares, to a tier 2 rare, we need 47.29 points. Possibly even more than that. But, uh, yeah, we'll see how that goes. I am hoping that the boys can pick up at least 10 AA scores each. And then on top of it, a clean sheet. So around like 60 points, if nothing happens with Payet and he keeps the score as it is. Ideally, I would like to see these boys get even more points because a tier two rare would make me very happy. I think there's a good chance of getting some really good players in there. So we'll see how that goes. But there's still everything open. Anything can happen. A cross from Payet on top of Caleta or Saliba's head on a corner could make a massive difference. Oh my god, dude. Lu <laughs> Luis Diaz is incredible. Sadio over to Keita. Keita. Oh, Sadio. What? What? How does Mendy save that? Are you kidding me? No. Kai Havertz. Kai Havertz. Oh, Kelleher. Let's go, Kelleher. You monster. Kai Havertz with one of the worst finishes, man. Unreal. I gotta admit, Marseille is doing that thing again that I don't enjoy one bit. We're 55 minutes into the game right now, guys. I can, sh I can show you what the scores are. Uh, in a bit, the uh, clean sheet bonuses will be coming in. Uh, and we'll see what happens there. But uh, the boys are looking all right. We're currently on 312 points, which I appreciate, of course. But my issue with the Marseille squad, once again, is the fact that after scoring just one goal... They seem to be content with being only one goal up against an opponent yeah. like Troy. This should be... And Dimitri Payet is going to get a yellow now. Great. Thanks, man, for losing three points. I love it. Great. Oh, man, that could be the difference, you know. At the end of the day, that could be the difference of getting a reward or not. But um, going back to it, Marseille, once again, just plain lackluster, no energy... No one is trying to show themselves for a moment. It just feels like every single Marseille game I've watched so far. They take the lead and then it's like, yeah, it's fine. We did everything we needed to do. Okay, Rongier is coming off. I like that. I like that a lot. He has just not been the player that I enjoyed at all. Um, he just plays in a weird position where he's right back, center mid, right wing. I don't know what the hell he's doing. So I'm happy with Lirola actually coming in and taking over that position now. I hope he just doesn't play too offensively. Oh, we're on 351 points right now as things stand, boys. That would give us a tier two rare. As actually, no, it wouldn't. I need more points. I need more. I need one more decisive coming out of somewhere. Ah, man. I wonder how it's going to go. Like, what, what decisive do I... It would be a high tier three, but... Ideally, I want to see Dimitri Payet or one of the center backs get a goal in like a corner or something. That's the ideal situation. But most importantly, we need to keep that clean sheet no matter what happens. Lads, look at... Oh, wow. Chelsea could score and they don't. They hit the post 1v1 against Kelleher. Unbelievable. Um, let me just tell you this. Right now, as things stand, we're 91st in the world. A decisive to come from anyone in a positive way would take us into incredible, incredible heights, guys. That is exactly what I'm hoping for in this Marseille game. Still 18 minutes to go, but most importantly, keeping that clean sheet will be good, more than enough for me. Troy are making two replacements for their team. I don't know who these guys are, so I'm hoping they're trash. <laughs> I'm really hoping they're trash. We're currently on 364 points, guys. 364, please. Come on. Come on, Marseille. Don't bottle this. I mean, look at this. Look at these beautiful, beautiful scores. Imagine if I could get a good game going here. And on top of that, oh, we can have... We... Oh, Paye gets subbed off. My captain gets... He got subbed off just, just now. He's on 60 points and the rest of his game has been trashed. So I guess it's probably for the better of Marseille. 
Um, I guess I'm not going to get a decisive off of him. So I'm now completely relying on the defense. Paye got subbed off. Okay. Well, I don't know how to feel about that, lads. Dimitri Paye gets us 74.4 points as the captain. 79th right now we are. Please, let's keep this up. Lads, five minutes to go. And this is our point total as we speak. As Troy is attacking right now. Well done. Well defended by Lirola. Oh, there he goes. Oh, Luan Perez is through here. No, he's not. Forget about it. Anyways, um, 366 points. Tier 2 rare. Very much possible. Down to tier 3 rare. We have, uh, you know, I mean, 6.77. That's not a lot of points, especially with 83% only being completed. Ideally, we need to still pick up a few more points here. Oh, Kolasinac, what are you doing? He came subbed on now. Nothing, nothing's coming off it. Cross coming in, far post. Please, 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 Marseille. I beg you, man. Just once, lads. Just once. It's a cross and it's in. I swear to God, I knew it, man. Every single time this team does the same thing. Every single time. Joke of a squad. I swear to God, this Marseille team is a joke. That's it. It's gone. We're, we're gonna, if we get lucky, we get a tier three rare, but this is just absolutely ridiculous. I cannot believe it, man. This team is just so bad at defending the wings. It's incredible. The two center backs, I actually feel bad for them because these guys always do well. And the goalkeeper, I feel the worst for because Paul Lopez has an amazing game every time. But these guys on the wings, the Kolasinacis of this world, the ones that play in the right back position, the Lirolas, the Luan Perezes, they suck. They don't know how to defend. It's literally three Marseille players against two. They get beaten so easily at the far, at the far side. And he scores. Easy goal. I can't believe it, man. I am I'm actually so pissed. This Marseille team... I'm going to I'm going to sell everyone. I am not even joking. I am literally selling every single one of them. We have um 0.62 points to no reward. So we're going to get no reward out of this game. Out of this game week, boys. It's done. It's pretty much finished. At least Liverpool just scored. Get in. Okay. Liverpool just scored. Get in, man. Joel Matip once again. What an absolute legend. Marseille you guys are a joke. You guys are an absolute, absolute joke, man. I just went from a tier two to nothing. Absolutely nothing. Corner kick. Last chance for Marseille to score and save me a tier three reward. It's coming in. Gway gets it, shoots, and it goes over the goal. Nothing's going to come off it. Marseille is a shambles and remains that way forever for me. This Marseille team could not perform for weeks on weeks against some of the weakest teams they could have possibly been playing against. And now they conceded against one of the lowest scoring sides in League 1. I mean, the way this team has been playing is just absolutely shocking. If I can get out of any of these players this week, I will get out of them. I am done with Marseille. I'm going to be looking somewhere else to bring in players because this is doing my head in, man. I'm actually, like, thinking about getting rid of every single one of them. I'm not even joking. Like, I am at a point where I'm just sick and tired of their lack of being able to keep a clean sheet against these bad sides. And on top of it, their lack of wanting to score a second and being happy with scoring one goal and just sitting back and getting nothing out of these games over and over again. It's done. 90th minute. The game is over. I can show you guys right now how many points we have gotten here. So, take a look at it. We have, uh, we are currently 213th. We, have, we are on 320 points at the end of this game. And uh, we're only six points away from a tier three rare. So, uh, with 83% being completed, I don't think we'll make it in there. I'd be extremely surprised if we do. And even, even if we do make it in there, I still feel like it's been a terrible, terrible game week for us. And, um... Yeah, man, I'm just not happy at all. The under-23s, as expected, uh, Feyenoord had a tough time against AZ away from home. Uh, the Kaiser is going to be playing. I don't expect anything from him anyways, so we'll see what happens there. At least I'm hoping he gets a clean sheet so Utrecht gets a bit more confidence moving forward, but 
I'm at a point now where I'm just very, very unhappy with the performances of some of these players. And of course, looking back at this at some point, I will probably look at this and think, oh, you know what? It would be smarter to hold on and wait. But so many great performances of this Diaby have been wasted by teams like these not performing. That uh, it's going to be coming down to Diaby actually not performing at one point. Uh, oh, go on. Luis Diaz. Luis Diaz nearly scores in a 75th. But yeah, I am just generally upset, as you guys can clearly tell. We'll see what happens. But yeah. I'm done for the live reactions. So as you guys have seen, it has been a messy, messy day. Now, let's take a look at all my lineups. Let's see what my players have done. As you can clearly tell, we have not won a single reward, which was really disappointing considering that I was really looking forward to this game week. I couldn't wait for it. I thought this was going to be the one. And it started off with DLB getting the 88.4. And once again, he has been let down by the champion Europe lads. I feel bad for Musa DLB at this point point because he has been performing since five games and the other ones are just constantly letting him down which is a huge huge upset and a waste of an under 23 forward doing as well as he has been doing but one good thing that I can take about uh, out of this this week is that we have hit the threshold of 233 points now that means we're getting ourselves 0.01 ETH which I will take um, one interesting thing as well was that Vinicius Souza scored a goal, but then also did go ahead and get a red card right after. Well done, Vinicius. Had my, ho had my hopes up for hitting the second threshold level with this team. Even though I just put this one together as like a throwaway team, that was my thought behind it initially. Because I thought, you know what, if I can get the threshold with this team, why not put it in there? But uh, I have brought in Nicolas Storm, as you can see, who still managed to get 45 points with no goal. So this is definitely someone that I really, really like and someone that I personally think could have a huge impact on my teams in the future and um, that I'm going to use until the Belgian, Belgian League kind of runs off. And I personally fully expect him uh, to change to a different side after this season because his performances have been too good for the team he plays in, in my opinion, at least from what I have seen so far. Uh, let me know in the comments down below if you guys have any thoughts on that. But it was beautiful to see. Uh, Fabian Ruiz get the goal for Napoli in the 90th minute. He basically smacked it from outside of the box, but it wasn't necessarily a smacker. It was a beautifully placed shot, curving around three defenders, perfectly slotted into the bottom left corner, and he just did an amazing job there. So congratulations to Fabian Ruiz for an amazing performance. After a couple of bad performances lately, if we look into it here, uh, his performances have not been that good. I basically bought him around this game or this game. And ever since then, he has been going down. But it's beautiful to see him get that 77-point game now, which is going to be quite nice. And Napoli have some interesting and tough matchups coming up. So I don't fully expect Fabian Ruiz to ever be pushed into my uh, Champion Europe rare team because I just look at these fixtures and I think... That those are tough ones, man. Those are really tough ones. So ideally, I want to keep using him in the all-star division. And if he can do this well, that's great. That's a lot of points. And the big bonus on him, he got 77 points. But with the 10% uh, bonus I have on him, that's a huge jump from 77 to 85. So that was great to see as well. That impact is just massive. And the same goes for Vinicius Souza. We have an 8.5% bonus on him now. So it really pays off to hold on to players for as long as you can and trust in them and have that patience. And talking about patience, I nearly lost it with Marseille. I mean, I did lose it. You guys saw it in a video. Dimitri Payet was horrible throughout that entire game. He was awful. His passing was off. His positioning was off. It just, his crosses from the corners were terrible. I don't know what is going on with Payet. But luckily, he got the decisive there, so I'm pretty glad about that one. But still, I expect a lot more from him because Diaby started off with 92.4 points with two goals against Bielefeld, as I fully expected Bayer Leverkusen to do really well there. I thought he would get a decisive. I didn't think he would get two, so that was great to see. And talking about Diaby, my friends... He's going up in price, man. He's going up in price. He has lately just sold for 3750 I mean, that is incredible. I basically bought him for like 2.3K um, when you consider the trade I made at the, at the point in time it happens. And uh, now he goes for 1,400 euros more, which was very tempting. I was actually very tempted to sell him at that point, but I thought, you know what? Nah. I'm going to trust in Diaby. He still has Europa League midweek use, uh, usage, which means 
he's probably going to be popped in into the midweek games with these guys again because um, the likes of Dimitri Payet and PSG, uh, PSG uh, and Marseille have games coming up against Basel midweek. And that is going to be the same as Diaby. So I can put in all these guys into the, into the, into the games. My only issue is the goalkeeper because Paulo Lopez is going to be on the bench. Mandanda plays the games um, for uh, Marseille at the moment uh, in, the, in the conference league. So that's a big letdown. So ideally, if I want to be able to compete, I need a goalkeeper that plays in the midweeks. And I just don't know if I'm willing to spend that money on a goalkeeper right now. But we'll see what happens there. Um, moving down the under-23s. As I said, when I build the lineups, I said it's going to be very hard for my Feyenoord boys to perform. But even though Kukchu and Sinistera didn't get any decisives, they still racked up 47.9 and 52 points, which I'm very happy with. And then with the multiplier, you can see that Kukchu got us 65 and then Sinistera got us 52.2. And the Kaiser actually had an amazing game. My man made five saves. And even though he lost his clean sheet, he had a 45-point game. So that was great to see. I was very, very happy to see that. And immediately, as you can tell here, people have started paying more for him. And I fully expect as the Kaiser keeps on moving and uh, plays against like Go Ahead here, where there could be a clean sheet in for him there. That'd be great. PSV, that's going to be a tough one. But Groningen and Valveik and Fortuna, I do have some hopes of them games being quite competitive and being quite good for them as well. And a bunch of these games, as you can tell, are being played at home. So I, I just generally hope that the Kaiser is going to be able to get better and get, get better and basically get more confidence as things move forward. Uh, Tomori and AC Milan, I mean, I was once again very, very disappointed about this one because uh, they conceded. I think it was quite late as well, if I'm not mistaken. I don't know exactly. Let me just, just double check here. My fop mob does not work for whatever reason. I don't know why it's not working properly. But if we go back to the previous game week, I think they conceded late. Oh, it actually wasn't late. It was in the 66th minute. But AC Milan, once again, not able to keep a clean sheet at home. Which, again, of course, was absolutely disappointing. Rafa Leao looked incredible. And I got to say, man, Romagnoli is really playing well. Like, he is doing an amazing job. And he is a fraction of uh, Tomori's price. So I look at that and think, man, I'm, I'm, I have someone that's worth like three times as much as this guy. And he's not performing to his level lately, which is really annoying because having a good performing center back partner, you'd think that that would help Tomori. But his game has not been great. And again, the Udinese striker in the first half was a tall one, as I mentioned to you guys. And he was dominating Tomori again in the air, which again, made him lose a bunch of... Um, a bunch of these duels. Yeah, duels lost. Six of them. Look at that. That's just not good, man. Minus 12 points. That's a huge difference. So I think from now on, I'm going to pay an attention to if Tomori has opponents that are tall and good in the air. Because if they do, they kind of target him from what I've seen. And he's just not capable to deal with it. So ideally, I want to play Tomori in a team when he is not playing against a tall striker. That's something I'm going to keep in mind of because that's something I've seen from um, watching the games myself. So the under-23s, as I fully expected, did not get a reward. But this one was just pain, man. Just such pain. Losing out on like 50 points. That was just so tough. Um, ideally, it would have given us like a high tier 3 rare by the looks of things after a lot of these games have been uh, completed. But yeah, a high tier 3 rare on the 23, I would have loved to take. Uh, it would have been even better than the, than the reward that we got last time. Uh, and that boy only played uh, for 45 minutes because in Korea, they have some weird uh, substitution rule. If you play a bunch of under 23s, you are allowed one more substitution or something like that. And then he got subbed off and uh, the game went on without him. And I think the guy that came in for him actually didn't do too bad. Was it this guy? Don't tell me he's a, he's a left back, isn't he? He came in in the second half and scored. So that's tough. That's really tough. So the guy that we had got a yellow card, got subbed off, and the other one that came in and scored. Oh, that's a bad look. I still hope, though, that this man is going to continue playing. And again, he's going to be put into the under twenty into the all-star team. And uh, this kind of sparked, uh, after the bad results of my teams, this kind of sparked a little bit of a discussion. Not discussion, but like suggestions from the community, which I really, really appreciate, guys. 
And they were saying, Johnny, what do you think about like not necessarily going for the divisions that you have gone for, like the under 23s or the champion Europe rare, and instead focusing on the Americas and the um and the uh what's it called, the challenger Europe and all star rare, because you're more likely to win rewards there with a um uh, with your budget which I completely agree with. I agree. I would probably do much better in terms of like a return in rewards uh, if I would be playing in those divisions, because technically speaking, it is easier with the budget that I have put into the, into the, uh, into the account now. But at the same time, I just have to say, I enjoy Champion Europe games the most. I enjoy under 23s the most. Like that is my number one. Champion Europe rare is my number two because I can watch those games I can watch those games all. I have access to them. The ones with America and Asia and all those ones, they are being played at weird times. It's kind of tough to catch those games live, but it is what it is, man. I personally have uh, told the people in Discord as well, I am fully aware that I can do much better in other divisions as well. And my next investments that are going to be coming in are mainly going to be for those divisions. Like I want to have a very, very highly competitive all-star rare team as well. I want to be able to compete for rewards there as well instead of just going for thresholds. I also want to improve upon this Champion Europe team. Ideally, I would like to do that. I would like to improve my under 23 rare as well. But I am looking to bring in within the next two months, I am looking to build up two more teams basically of an all-star rare team that really is competitive and ideally go for like a challenger Europe as well because you can win some of the best under 23s in there. And that's something that I'm going to keep in mind as well because they are just worth a lot. And I would like to take part in there as well and kind of use my ability to read Turkish news and have my uh, my finger in terms of like in there and being able to get the informa information uh, from people from Turkey uh, due to no language barrier. I think I could do really well when it comes to challenger, uh, challenger Europe as well. So those are some things that I'm thinking about. The future investments are going to be going into those types of directions for sure. And Asia and MLS as well, because I want to be able to play over the summer. But as I said, I'm just going to be waiting for my disposable in income to come. And then I'm going to reinvest. Right now, as things stand, apparently our account is worth around 28300 which is lovely to see. And um, I'm pretty happy with that. And that is impacted by the fact that Bitcoin today... And Ethereum, everything just jumped up massively, like a huge jump in the price has all of a sudden occurred today, which um, gives me hope. I mean, we have gone up in the last four hours. We have gone up around 8%, like nearly 8% in the last four hours. Ethereum as well has gone up massively there. What is that percentage wise? Let's see. So that is like, that is like a 7.6% candle there just very similar to Bitcoin as well. And then hit resistant here at the at the yellow line. Bitcoin is hit in between these resistance lines that I had here for a very long time. And if we can break through these as well, man, it's a good look. It's a very good look. But obviously, it all depends on the global situation, how much this, uh, this Ukraine and Russia thing is going to go on for. I really hope that it can be resolved, not because of my monetary gain, but because of the uh, because of humanity, man, I just don't want people to, to, to just go out there and, you know, hurt each other. It's just, it's just senseless, man. I thought we would be past that at this point in 2022, but apparently we aren't. But hey, boys, I hope everyone is doing well. Let me know in the comments down below how your teams have done for sure. And one thing you and I have to look forward to big time is that so rare have basically announced that they're going to have scouting season, which is big. So from the 28th of February up until the 3rd of April, there's going to be scouts. Uh, there's going to be the scouting season in which you can basically go ahead and win unique items. Yes, unique items with limited players. So let me go in there here. Special weekly calendar, 250 to 254. Scouting season, March also brings the underdog series. So basically how this works is... Your team, I believe, for the, uh, yeah, there you go, all scarcities. You can use all scarcities sending into the weekly competition. It has to be um, players that are at a high, at highest score of average in their L5, I believe. They have to be at 45. 
So if you have players that you thought didn't do too well and are very inconsistent in what they do. Sorry, I'm trying to fix my mic here because I messed it up. Yeah, there we go. All right. Um, so if you have any players that you think could be doing better if they have a decent matchup and they do have a decent matchup in, a, in, in week 250 and they have a score below 45, this is your chance because... Number one gets a tier one unique. Number two gets a tier two unique. Number three does as well. If you win that unique, you're you're like getting thousands of euros. This is insane. And you can do that by having limited players. So I'm going to be going ahead and doing some scouting for game week 250 because I'm going to buy myself a bunch of limiteds that are very cheap that I believe could be doing well. I think I'm going to focus in the Turkish league myself and uh, go for that. And basically... Try and put a team that's going to be very competitive. So that has me excited because why not? It's basically like taking a lock lottery ticket and seeing how it goes. And uh, then the next game week, we can use them again. But that one is midweek. And that one is like Conference League, Europa League, Champions League. So those are going to be more expensive. But that week right there, lads, I highly recommend you get involved just for the off chance of getting one of these players, even super rares or rares off of like buying players that are worth 50 euros in total that would be huge so um we'll see how that goes obviously the goalkeeper is going to be a bit more expensive i would reckon because a lot of people have to buy those goalkeepers now so if you do your scouting spend a lot of time on it see how things go and if you do it right man you could be looking at a tier one unique because this is the one time where people with big budgets cannot outdo people with smaller budgets because these limiteds that are at uh with that are coming in with these types of scores they're going to be able to uh to be used here and i'm really looking forward to that i'm just thinking right now can i actually use can i use the kaiser in here because ideally i don't want to buy a goalkeeper um so let me just double check what is the score of my goalkeepers oh they both suck paul lopez goes in there straight away then oh that's great all right, <laughs> so I have a good goalkeeper. And in terms of my rares in general, like who can I put in there in terms of the highest average score? Game week 250, we could put in Fabian Ruiz. Ooh, we could put in Jesus Ferreira. Okay. I mean, I like my chances with those players, you know? Not, I mean, not maybe not podiuming, but like these guys could have a game week where they do well. So rather than putting some of my players into like all-star rare, I might put them in here. So Fabian Ruiz, Jesus Ferreira, those guys could be put into uh, that game week for me. And then I can combine them with a bunch of uh, uh, other players in terms of limited. So Paul Lopez, Fabian Ruiz, Jesus Ferreira. I already have three players I would like to put in. I'm going to check their matchups though. If I don't like the matchups, I might just go ahead and spend a little bit of money on some limiteds. And now that ETH has risen, might be a good time to buy because my ETH was worth like 640 a couple of days ago. Now it's up to 690. And that's the beauty of having something in terms of like money in your wallet at all times. But as always, guys, thank you so much for tuning in. I'm looking forward to the scouting season. I'm looking forward to hopefully coming back strong and still trusting this Marseille team. Hopefully it will pay off because I have high hopes in these guys actually doing something in these upcoming weeks because they have AS Monaco. That's a tough game, but they're playing at home, so it's going to be a spicy little match. Basel at home, that I'm looking forward to. Midweek, that utility is huge, so that's why I'm not selling the Marseille boys. Combining them with the likes of uh, Diaby from Leverkusen is going to be huge, um, but obviously we need a, another goalkeeper, so we'll see how that one goes. Um, League A against Brest, I hope they do well there. Then against Basel as well, so technically three decent matchups in the next five. So I'm going to still believe in these guys and hopefully we're going to finally see some green dots here for Paulo Lopez because that means he's going to have a clean sheet. So yeah, guys, thank you so much for watching. As always, do your own research when it comes to Soul Rare. Do not invest into it in, in with money that you cannot be like, that you cannot lose, right? Just do it for fun. If it's disposable income, cool. But if it's not, please don't do it. Don't put all, to, all your money into stuff like this. It is very volatile and it's important that you do your research before getting involved. But as always, guys, thank you for watching. I'll catch you in the next one. Take care and peace.